So uh, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, organizers for this special event. Um, I feel very honored to uh, give a talk in this uh, uh, occasion of uh, uh, celebrating the 80th birthday of my supervisor, Robert Moody. Um, it was my uh, very best luck to meet him in Edmonton in 1998 um, and learn from him during my graduate study. Um, what I have learned from him uh, isn't just limited to math, uh, but like it was uh, life in general. I would like to uh, express my sincere thanks to him for being such a wonderful uh, supervisor. Um, what I'd like to talk today is about pure point spectrum and regular model set uh, in substitution piling in D dimension. Um, I talked about this topic uh, some years ago in, uh, in a workshop at Metric in Me Melbourne in Australia. Um, at the time after my talk, a uh, few people came to me and said that um, something seems to be strange. Uh, it seems to uh, uh, doesn't fit very well with an um, example of um, uh, Bakke Muri uh, Schlotman uh, in the paper of uh, 1998. So we have looked at this uh, example more carefully and uh, realized that the argument only works in uni-modular uh, case, uh, not in general case. So we tried to um, uh, uh, develop this uh, uh, non-unimodular case. So today, um, I would like to talk about the, this development on non-unimodular setting. So, um, so what I'm going to talk is a pure point spectrum and regular model set on non-unimodular substitution tiling in uh, D dimension. And pure point spectrum here, uh, yesterday Daniel uh, talked about pure point diffraction spectrum. I'm going to talk about pure point dynamic spectrum, but uh, these two notions are quite, uh, quite equivalent uh, in quite general setting, especially in substitution tiling, uh, they are equivalent. So you can uh, talk this concept as the same uh, notions. So the outline of my talk, I will give you the definition of substitution tiling, uh, starting from two-letter substitution uh, tiling, and uh, giving you the definition as well as uh, some of the properties that I that we are going to use. And uh, the, the I will remind you, but it's a pure point spectrum and uh, regular model sets. And after that, uh, I will talk about the main result. And if time permits, I will talk about further study from here. So let us look at uh, two letter substitution. Uh, A goes to AAB, B goes to ABAB. Uh, the corresponding substitution matrix is uh, like this. So A gives you two A and one B, so two and one. And B gives us a 2A and 2B, so it gives a 2, 2. So this is the corresponding substitution matrix. And the corresponding uh, characteristic polynomial uh, is uh, x squared minus 4x plus 2. And if we solve this equation, uh, equal to 0 equation, then the largest root of this uh, equation, characteristic uh, equation, is 2 plus root 2. And the other one is a two minus root of two. So the one which is bigger is a uh, parent-giving eigenvalue. So here, uh, what we can notice uh, is that if you try to find a minimal polynomial of this lambda, and it it is the same as a characteristic polynomial of this, this substitution matrix. 
And this happens when you deal with the uh, one dimension uh, substitution tiling. But we are, uh, we are working with uh, in general D dimension substitution tiling. So uh, some notions are a little bit different um, comparing to one dimension. So here, uh, the minimal polynomial of this uh, lambda uh, is exactly uh, this polynomial equal to zero. And here we can notice that the constant part is two, which is not plus minus one. And when this, uh, uh, the constant part is plus minus one, we call it uh, unimodular. If it is not plus minus one, it is a uh, uh, non-unimodular case. In this case, uh, we can look at it from characteristic polynomial. Now, uh, considering a uh, tile uh, whose length one uh, and another tile is uh, interval of length root to two, the expansion factor is two plus root to two. So we can subdivide into uh, three pieces and two length one tile and one root to two uh, tile. And if we expand root to two tile by expansion factor, uh, then it become two plus two root to two, and we can get two uh, one length interval and two root to two length interval. So substitution tile, uh, the rule tile equation uh, appears like this. And starting from a uh, red interval, and we apply these uh, rules, and over and over again, then we can fill up the uh, uh, the half side of real line. If you also put the left hand side blue uh, tile, then you can expand to the left hand side as well. So it actually gives us a uh, tiling in R. So this is the object that we are looking at. Uh, in general, we have a prototiles, finite prototiles, and there are patches. And substitution is defined by uh, following. Uh, substitution is with the expansion linear map phi. And this uh, uh, tiles uh, supporting part has to have this property that uh, it is uh, non-empty and it is the closer of its own interior. And there is a finite uh, digit set. So when you inflate the one tile, then it is uh, uh, the translation copy of uh, prototiles with the translation uh, coming from uh, DIJ digit sets. And if you are looking at the support part only, then expand this AJ by expansion vector phi, then it, it is the uh, uh, translation copies of AIs. And here the union is disjoint union in the interior and boundary can meet. And uh, we say that uh, the set of tiles is a tiling if it covers the whole uh, space uh, and each tile doesn't have a uh, overlap in the interior. And if this tiling is fixed under this substitution, and we call this tiling a substitution tiling. So we are actually dealing with uh, a fixed uh, tiling under substitution. So here's come uh, here's the definition of uh, unimodular in the general case. This uh, phi expansion map is called the unimodular if the minimal polynomial of phi over z has constant term plus minus one. So here the minimal polynomial of phi over z means the uh, the following. Uh, we consider one polynomial over z with the minimal degree satisfying p phi equal to zero. Then we uh, call this px as uh, minimal polynomial over phi over z, if it doesn't exist. Um, but in our case, uh, we, are, we are in the case of um, uh, repetitive, uh, primitive, or finite local complexity case. And it is known that if you are starting from the finite local complexity, the um, this phi, uh, the eigenvalues of phi has to be algebraic integer. It is known uh, in the paper uh, 
the Kenyan and Solomiak, as well as uh, 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 Kravitz paper. So we are in this uh, setting that uh, there is a minimal polynomial and the constant part is plus minus one, that is the unimodular case. Uh, if it is not the case, then pi is non unimodular. And here, the definition of a piece of family and uh, Mayer set, and these two notions are very close, and it appears to, uh, in our context. So I define it here. So we say spec phi uh, as a set of eigenvalues of phi, and uh, it forms a piece of family if the following set is phi. So you take uh, any eigenvalue of phi and look at the algebraic conjugate of it, if it is not in the spec of pi, then it must be uh, less than one in absolute value. In other words, um, you have an algebraic conjugate uh, whose absolute value is bigger than one or equal to one, then it must be in the spec of pi. It must be the eigenvalue of pi. Um, in our setting, uh, phi is expansion map, so there is no eigen, um, the, no algebraic conjugate whose absolute value is equal to um, one. We don't uh, consider that case. So uh, the, this piece of family property, uh, it comes from the uh, assumption of a pure point spectrum. I will mention uh, later a uh, slide that so we are interested uh, in the direction of going from pure point spectrum to regular model set because the regular model set implying pure point spectrum is well known. So it's, we, uh, we are going the other direction. So if you assume pure point spectrum, uh, the having piece of family property is a consequence of it. So you can have in mind that uh, what we have uh, with this pi is that eigenvalues uh, uh, forming a uh, piece of family. So that all the algebraic conjugates whose absolute value is bigger than one is in our uh, set of eigenvalues of pi. Um, we say the point set lambda is a mayor set if it is a Telonet set and then translation vector set is uniformly discrete as well. Uh, we call it a mayor set. And these two notions are very close. I uh, show you in the next slide. Um, assuming that T is a aperiodic uh, repetitive primitive uh, tiling, uh, phi is diagonalizable and also uh, eigenvalues of phi uh, as regularly conjugate with the same multiplicity, then these three properties are equivalent. So the set of eigenvalues of a dynamical system is uh, relatively dense. It is the same with the uh, control point set of a tiling is a uh, mayor set. And uh, T is rigid and the spec of phi forms a piece of family. I didn't explain what is rigid, but uh, in the next slide, I will explain to you what it is. So um, if we are assuming pure point spectrum, uh, it implies that eigenvalue set is relatively dense. So we have this property. So uh, assuming pure point spectrum, we have a mayor set, we have a spec phi piece of family. So we are uh, starting from uh, this. And this uh, result uh, answers the question uh, raised by uh, Ligarius uh, in 2000, uh, 2000 paper, uh, affirmatively. Uh, he was asking uh, whether you have, um, when you have a pure point spectrum uh, with a finite local complexity, does it imply mayor set? And this one says, yes, uh, it is a mayor set. So now I explain what is the rigid structure for tiling. Uh, when we have a tiling, we look at the translation vector set um, here. And Kenyon and Solomiak paper, uh, it says that if you have a finite local complexity, and this is a, a set of similar case. So there is an expansion vector. Um, then this translation vector set is lying in this module. Here, um, alpha 1 and alpha d is a basis of Rd. So this is the case where um, this phi 
and the eigenvalue with the uh, multiplicity is d. So in this case, alpha 1 to alpha d appears. And generalizing this property um, under the assumption of finite, finite local complexity, uh, we have additional assumption here. Uh, it would be nice if we can uh, remove this, but we still have it. Um, if a phi is a diagonalizable over C and eigenvalues of phi are algebraically conjugate with the same multiplicity, J, then up to isomorphism, linear isomorphism, this translation vector set is contained in um, some module uh, which is written on the right hand side. So here alpha 1 to alpha j, and this alpha j is the same with this uh, multiplicity j. So um, what it means is um, uh, if you have a phi, uh, say multiplicity uh, 2, then um, uh, say you have a phi uh, in the four dimension, lambda, mu, lambda, mu, then uh, lambda mu are uh, algebraically conjugate and the multiplicity is two, then uh, this alpha one case will be one, one, zero, zero. Uh, alpha j is zero, zero, one, one, uh, up to some isomorphism. So this is uh, called the rigid structure. And uh, probably many uh, people are not familiar with uh, this property. So to uh, give you an idea about this property, let me show you Frank Q. Robinson's substitution tiling. We have uh, four different uh, prototypes and we iterate uh, by expansion uh, map by like this. And here B is the root of um, this polynomial, uh, this uh, equation. And we subdivide this uh, inflated tile this way. So then we need only four uh, different prototypes. And using this substitution uh, tile equation, we can build the uh, tiling. And in this case, uh, uh, the largest root of this uh, equation is not the piezo number. And it is proven uh, in their paper that it it is not a finite local complex case. Uh, but even then, uh, the, this translation vector set is lying in this module here. Um, the way we look at this is that if you take uh, the representative point of each tile uh, at the bottom of left n, then it's really a matter of uh, what this digit sets. So you look at the digit sets and look at all the uh, the translates of these digit sets, then you can observe that they are all lying in this module on the right hand side. So this is not the FLC case, but it satisfies the rigid structure. So this is the structure uh, that we are um, we are at, we are dealing with. Um, there is an example of a Kenyan's substitution tiling, which is doesn't satisfy rigid structure. Um, this uh, has a uh, one prototype looks like this uh, fractal looping. Um, you can put this type of uh, this uh, uh, shape uh, in each dot. Then uh, after iterating uh, second times, we get patch like this. And here expansion map is 3003 and the digit set uh, given like this. Here, um, what is uh, uh, special about it is that the second, uh, the horizontal line is over the integer, but the vertical line, the second part, uh, it's slightly uh, over uh, some irrational number. So here, A is irrational number. So if you look at the old translation vector set that it's a line in this module, there's no way to eliminate this third part. So in this case, it's not a rigid structure. So we are not uh, dealing with uh, this structure. The so pure point spectrum uh, is about the pure point dynamical spectrum. Uh, X is a collection of uh, tiling made of uh, tiles in T. 
and we look at the OB closure uh, of a uh, translation uh, of the closure of T with the local topology. This local topology means uh, two tilings are close. Uh, if uh, there is a huge agreement around the origins with the small shift. So uh, with this topology, we take uh, OB closure and we consider RD action on XT. And we assume that there is a unique invariant probability measure. And if we are in the substitution case, um, we know that it exists. So we can take that. And uh, we define the unitary operator on L2 by this translation. And if there is uh, some alpha, uh, after taking unitary operator uh, on F, uh, if we, it is uh, exponential function times F, then we say this F is an eigenfunction for this RD action. And the eigenfunction suspends the density subspace of L2 then we say that T is a pure point, um, has a pure point dynamic spectrum. And this is the same notion as a pure point diffraction spectrum. Um, here is a current project scheme which defines the regular model set. Uh, it is a collection of space and mapping. And our tiling lies on this physical space RD. And there is an internal space H, which uh, determines what to project uh, uh, on uh, RD. Um, so there is a physical space RD and some internal space H, and there's a product uh, space, which is a super space. And there is a lattice sitting in this super space. And when we consider canonical mapping pi one, and uh, restricted on this lattice, this pi one is uh, injective, and pi two. Um, if we take an image of uh, uh, L tilde under pi two, then that image is dense in H. That is a requirement. And um, this H is generally a uh, locally compact abelian group. And here, star map is uh, if you take uh, any element in L and take the inverse image of a pi one and, um, and take a image of a, a pi two, then that image is the uh, X star, and that's the star map. And we define a wedge V uh, in the following way. So we take a certain set in the internal space and the lattice points after projecting by pi two, if it lies in V, then we project that point uh, by pi one, then that collect all these points, then that's the wedge V. And this is the projected uh, point set. And this uh, point set uh, is called the model set if the window is uh, uh, has a non-empty interior and it is, the closure is compact. And if the boundary uh, is not complicated uh, with the condition that uh, how measure of the boundary equal to zero, then we say it's irregular. So the background of this work is that uh, in 2000, uh, Schlafman have shown that regular model set in RD has a pure point spectrum. And uh, Bakke Muri and Bakke Lenzi Muri from Garu have developed this relation uh, in quite general setting. But if we are looking at uh, substitution tiling, then it's more, uh, more uh, strict uh, structure. So we can say something more. And uh, pure point spectrum, uh, is related with uh, some set coming from current project scheme. Um, here, uh, the internal space is constructed uh, in an abstract way, so uh, it can be uh, it can it cannot be uh, said with a, a regular model set uh, because the measure in the internal space is really hard to con uh, compute or hard to control. So uh, the equivalence was uh, 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 with uh, some notion of intermodal set. But uh, 
in 2020, uh, we have shown that there is equivalence between regular model set and pure point spectrum in unimodular substitution tiling with a diagonalizable condition uh, on uh, expansion map. Um, here, uh, regular model set comes from current project scheme with the internal space Euclidean. Since it is Euclidean, we know very well about the space and we can actually compute the boundary of the window. So uh, this regular property comes from this uh, uh, computation uh, of uh, the boundary. So the question is uh, whether we can eliminate uh, unimodular property. So can we say anything about these two property on non-unimodular case, still assuming the diagonalizable uh, expansion map? So that's the question, and the main result is following. So we have a repetitive primitive substitution tiling with expansion map and still diagonalizable, and all the eigenvalues of phi are algebraically conjugate with the same multiplicity, eliminating uh, universal property. Um, T has a pure point spectrum uh, if and only if the control point set is a regular model set. Um, with the internal space, which is built by Euclidean space product with the uh, 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 profinite group. So I will explain uh, later with an example what the profinite group uh, is. So uh, the, this uh, proof, I only uh, give the sketch on uh, two letter substitution tiling that we have seen earlier. Uh, this is the same slide. So in this case, we have observed that this is a non-unimodular case. Now, I didn't explain what is the control point set. It's a, a smart way of a smart way of choosing representative points in the tiling. So there is so many way of taking representative points for the tile, but uh, if we choose is the control point in a, a smart way, then we can get away from the problem of height or uh, some various uh, uh, object, object uh, obstacle. So um, you can consider that this control point set is a representative point set of uh, tiling. And that set is contained in the module uh, Z lambda alpha and we have seen uh, this in the earlier result. Now, this L, L is module generated by element of alpha and lambda alpha over Z. So we try to look at what's happening if you apply lambda on alpha, then it become uh, one lambda alpha, so zero alpha. And we see what's happening on lambda alpha when we apply lambda. So then lambda square alpha, lambda square is uh, four lambda minus two alpha. So it become uh, minus two times alpha uh, plus four times lambda alpha. So if we take a, a matrix, uh, if we uh, consider a matrix taking the coefficient of uh, uh, this right hand side, then it's a zero, one, one minus two, four. But uh, for some purpose, we look at the transpose of it. And let's say the transpose of uh, the coefficient matrix are uh, N. Now, this module L, we can identify it with the chapter two, because this is module generated by two element alpha and lambda alpha. So we, um, identify this element uh, as a C1 and C2. So then um, when we apply phi to element in L and then uh, apply phi, it's the same as applying phi to V and then take uh, uh, the transpose of uh, M on the right hand side. But uh, we want to make uh, this M applying to the lattice from the left hand side 
So uh, we use uh, transpose of it. So we take element in Z2 and transpose it and make a vertical vector. And then apply this M from the left-hand side. Now, because we are considering the non-unimodular case, uh, this ML is not in L, uh, not, not L. So it's contained in L. Um, so now we consider inverse limit space, uh, which is a sequence of elements uh, in this uh, map. And this sequence uh, has a property that uh, if you take any element in the third component, and when you project it to the second component, it has to be uh, in um, x2 plus uh, m square l. Uh, it's the same thing for other components as well. And this is the requirement uh, for this sequence. And uh, we consider this linear space. Uh, this linear space contains canonical copy of this L uh, in this way. Um, if we consider unimodular case, this ML will be L. So uh, in the previous uh, uh, linear space, it's all trivial. It's all one. It's all trivial. So there's one, only one uh, element. If it is not a unimodular case, the intersection of MKL equal uh, zero element, and this L is contained in this uh, inverse linear space, uh, which is not same. And uh, we can there's a isomorphic uh, the identical image of L in uh, L M uh, the inverse linear space. So we identify L with the, the image uh, in this space. And this uh, uh, inverse limit space is a closer over L. So now here is uh, Psi, which gives a map from L to internal space. So this is actually the star map. Um, if you take an element to in this Z lambda alpha, it is going to be the polynomial of lambda times uh, alpha, uh, which apply to alpha. And then uh, in this physical space, uh, in the internal space, uh, uh, where it goes is that the same polynomial and use uh, the other conjugate of lambda, uh, whose absolute value is smaller than one. And this part here, um, it's real, it, the formula looks uh, complicated, but it's very simple. Uh, it's P lambda alpha is an uh, element uh, in here that we identified with the uh, set uh, square. And to make the vertical vector, we transpose it. And then uh, in this uh, uh, space, we, uh, uh, we have an isomorph uh, ident um, uh, identical image in this canonical uh, copy of this element in here, and that's the object here. So really, uh, it's the same element to, as uh, P lambda alpha, but looking at that element in this uh, inverse limit space. Um, so this is uh, the star map, uh, Psi. Now the control point set, uh, there's two colors, the C1 and C2. Uh, current project scheme is built in this way. There's R, and here's the internal space R cross um, uh, inverse space for finite uh, group. And uh, we have a lattice sitting in this uh, super space. Uh, this uh, lattice is built by um, X in L and the star, star image of X and this pair is the element in L tilde. And this L is uh, Z phi, or here I had to say lambda instead of phi. Um, and here pi one uh, restricting on L tilde is injected. We can show that uh, this lattice uh, image under pi 2 is dense in this uh, uh, internal space. 
and this letters L tilde, uh, the L tilde is the letters in this uh, superspace. So letters means it is a discrete group uh, whose quotient of uh, this superspace by L tilde is compact. Now, um, we know now the internal space is a Euclidean space product with a profinite group. Now, the basic open set in that space is the open ball cross this MK um, uh, L, uh, MK uh, inverse limit space. So this is uh, a basic open set in the profinite group. And we uh, take a, a direct product of it and see uh, what's the project point from this basic uh, basic basis open set. And that is uh, uh, element in that uh, again, this has to be lambda. Uh, elements in here uh, with the star map is in this open set. And that we call it uh, E delta K. And What's good about this uh, set is that when you apply phi to the n, or oh, here again, I have to say uh, lambda, uh, lambda to the n here, um, in this internal space, uh, the uh, Euclidean space uh, part, uh, we take uh, the conjugate one. So lambda here, lambda to the n, here is lambda bar to the n. And here um, we multiply m to the n to the uh, m to the k, uh, this profinite group. So what, what's happening with uh, expanding lambda to the n on e delta k is exactly uh, this shape. So we know uh, what's happening in the internal space. And also we know property that uh, when phi satisfies this of family, uh, this translation vector set is contained in this uh, uh, project this set E delta zero for some delta. And under the assumption of a pure point spectrum, for any element in L, we can find a certain L, power L, uh, so that pi to the L Y is in uh, this translation vector set. So here, uh, what we don't know uh, if there is any uh, some fixed large uh, power. Uh, this this lemma shows that this L depends on Y. But uh, can we can you control this L? That's the question, and this proposition uh, give us answer that yes, we can. Uh, control this L so that under the assumption of uh, existence of current project scheme and uh, pure point spectrum, if we apply here again lambda, lambda to the K to the E delta zero, then we can find uh, K so that this uh, set left hand side is contained in the translation vector set. So what's good about here is that the, the first lemma and proposition gives the relation between the translation vector set with uh, the projected set coming from the base, basic uh, basis open set uh, in the uh, internal space. So this relation gives us a uh, 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 link to a regular model set. So under the assumption of a pure point spectrum, we can find a nice substitution tiling in the hull so that uh, one, uh, one color uh, point set contains uh, lambda to the n uh, translation vector set. It's all in um, uh, lambda j. So this property is coming from uh, Pure point spectrum. Uh, pure point spectrum implies uh, uh, algebraic coincidence, and algebraic coincidence I didn't explain to you, but uh, it is really the uh, same as uh, this line of containment. But uh, we take a special one so that 
this uh, lambda j contains the origin uh, zero. If this happens, uh, apply substitution over and over again, we can make this lambda j as a, um, as a union of uh, uh, some translation of uh, lambda to the n uh, psi. But we have seen in the lemma and proposition the relation between psi and the projected uh, points at E delta k. So we, using that relation, uh, we can make uh, this uh, uh, lambda i as a union of uh, uh, this type of uh, set. So that's it. Uh, some translation of uh, lambda to the some power uh, e to the delta uh, zero. And we know e, e delta zero, uh, this is said, we know exactly what the internal space, internal window of this uh, project set. So we look at that, uh, the window for this set, and that's, it, that's this. And we know uh, what is the correct uh, right window for that. So our point set is coming from this window. And this is uh, open set, and it is the union of open set. So it is open set in the uh, internal space. So now, uh, now the only problem left that what is the boundary of this open set? Uh, this open set closure uh, is compact. Uh, it can be obtained from the mayor property. It's not a problem. And the only problem here is what's the boundary measure of UI. But since we are on the space, which we are very familiar with, Euclidean product with a uh, profinite group. So we can apply uh, Kissing's argument on this uh, space and, and to get a boundary measure of this uh, uh, open set. So then uh, we get a uh, boundary measure zero. So from here, uh, what to study uh, is the following. So uh, the main result uh, is always uh, under the assumption of uh, diagonalizability. And can we expand this uh, uh, result in non-diagonalizable case? Uh, so that's the question. Uh, Kenyon and Solomiak, uh, in the setting of a diagonalizable case, and Kravitz have removed the diagonalizability. And the theorem says that uh, this phi expansion map of a primitive repetitive finite local complex desubstitution tiling, then uh, it is uh, integral algebraic. Uh, what it means is that eigenvalue of this phi uh, uh, algebraic integers. That's what it means. And this phi is a peron. Um, if it is the case of a diagonalizable uh, situation, then uh, when you take an eigenvalue of a phi and take an a, a algebraic conjugate of that, uh, I say that you have a lambda, which is an eigenvalue of phi, and consider the algebraic conjugate of this lambda mu, then when this mu Abstract uh, absolute value of mu is uh, bigger than absolute value of lambda, or equal to uh, equal to. Then the multiplicity uh, of uh, this mu has to be bigger or equal to the multiplicity of lambda. That's the property in diagonalizable case, but in the non Diagonalizable case. Let us look at this example. So uh, we can make uh, this uh, Jordan form, and this uh, three plus root two, three minus root two are uh, 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 the conjugate, and three plus root two is bigger than three minus root two in absolute value, so that this uh, rank one, rank two block. Uh, when you compare the rank two block, this um, this rank two block of uh, three minus root two is one, 
then uh, 3 plus root 2, uh, this block has to be uh, 1 or larger than 1. So if we consider that this uh, 3 plus root 2 block uh, is not in 5, then uh, with the remaining uh, blocks, uh, we cannot uh, consider, we cannot, uh, there, there is no uh, self affine tiling with, uh, with the expansion map, which doesn't have a block over 3 plus root 2. Uh, that is what the pattern means. Um, so what's nice about uh, this property is that um, under the assumption of uh, substitution tiling, we know what phi has to be. And from there, uh, it would be nice if we know uh, the certain uh, module structure that the translation vector set lies. So in the diagonalizable case, uh, the necessary condition for expansion map is known by Kenyon and Solomie. And under the condition of a finite local complexity, we know that uh, rigid structure uh, uh, it's a given uh, with some more uh, assumptions. And with the same more assumptions, we know the equivalence between piezo family and Mayer set, and also pure point spectrum and regular mode set. So we know these two uh, relations in diagonalizable case. But uh, in the non diagonalizable case, nothing much uh, known. Uh, but Kovic's uh, paper uh, shows the necessary condition for phi. So um, the, the first question would be then uh, what would be the uh, rigid structure uh, in this case? And uh, what would be the equivalent property for the mayor property of a tiling? And third question would be uh, still pure point spectrum and regular model set. Uh, equivalence will hold uh, in non diagonalizable case. And that's the uh, remaining questions. Uh, this is uh, all I prepared. And thanks for your attention.